So what are you guys? We're part of the Sparkwood family. Hi guys, one question we get in class is, how much math do I need for the MCAT? Now, we generally don't have enough time in class to actually run a special math lesson, but, but what I want to do here is basically run through a more or less a crash course on all the math we'd actually need for the MCAT. So let's just go ahead and run through the highlights right now, okay? So the first thing to note is, of course, scientific notation. Okay, and I just want to do basically a couple of problems on this because I'm sure most of you pretty f are pretty familiar with this stuff. But if we took something like this, let's say like uh, 15 times 10 to the 3, or uh, 0 0.01 times 10 to the 4th, or let's say 0 0.009 times 10 to the 2. Okay, so take something like this. All right, well, remember, the whole goal is to get this guy between 1 and 9, right? So if we're looking at this, we'll transform this guy to 1.5. So we're making this guy basically smaller, right? So our power of 10 is smaller. So we need it to compensate. We need to make this guy 10 times as big. So that would be 10 to the 4th, right? And all we've really done in practice is we multiply this entire number by 1, which doesn't change its value, right? It's just that here, we did this part, divided by 10 to get it to 1.5. And then we took this part and multiplied by 10 to get 10 to the positive 4. OK. So now over here, same thing. So over on this kind of move one, two decimal places, so that's going to be 2. So you're making it big by a factor of 10 squared. So you make this guy smaller to compensate by a factor of 10 squared. Over here, this guy is, we're going to make this guy 1, 2, 3 bigger. So we're going to make this guy 3 smaller. So it's going to be 9 times 10 to the, well, 3 smaller would be 2 minus 3, which is 10 to the negative 1. Okay? So the rule of thumb that's cheapest or easiest, I think, is this. However many places you move the decimal point, right? Like here we moved it 1, 2. We need to make this exponent 2 smaller. Okay? And over here, since we made him 1, 2, 3 bigger, we need to make this guy 3 smaller. So literally 2 minus 3. Uh, and up here, if we go back to the original, we made this guy 1 smaller, right? So we need to make this guy 1 bigger. Okay? No big deal. Okay. Another case where you could see this sort of thing is when we talk about solubility. Uh, and for those of you that are in class, you know, we saw this for a KSP, that sort of solubility thing. Let's say we have 4 times 10 to, say, negative 12. And let's say over here we have 4s cubed. Okay? If I want to solve for s, we can literally divide by 4, right? And then we need to take the cube root. So I want to think of it this way. When you exponentiate, the exponents multiply. So if I multiply this guy by 1 third, it's the same thing as taking the cube root of this. But just follow our rules, right? If you exponentiate, you're going to multiply these guys. But a third times 3 is just s to the 1. That's what we want. Got to do it to both sides, though. So 10 to the negative 12, 1 third. 1 third of negative 12 is negative 4. And that's it, right? So for example, if you're looking at the pH of something, which is the negative log of the H plus concentration, right? What if we do an example where the H plus concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 2? To be honest, I got a little ahead of myself. We should have done this example first. So if you're told to take the negative log base 10 of 10 to the negative 2, remember the pH is the negative log of the H plus concentration, how would you get that? Well, first of all, just look at this. Remember, log looks at the exponent, and log base 10 looks at what power of 10 will give you this number. Well, if it's 10 to the negative 2, the power to get 10 to the negative 2 is negative 2, right? So these guys will kill each other, and you'll actually just get negative 2, OK? Of course, the negative's in front, so you do this. So what's the quick, quick version of this? If I'm taking log of any number, the definition of log here means what is the exponent you would stick on 10 to get this number? Well, the exponent you stick on 10 to get this entire number is definitely 5, right? So whenever you're taking log of 10 to any power, all you're really doing is getting that exponent. Okay? Some of my students have talked about stuff they've seen online or heard from a friend or whatever about memorizing logs, like memorizing log of 2 and log of 5, et cetera, et cetera. So this is specifically for my students what I'm going to say next. But of course, everyone's free to make of it what they will. And that is, that is such a waste of time. Yeah. Okay? I mean, math majors that love this sort of crap, they would never worry about that. But okay. whatever. Um, so the point is, nobody does that. Why would you want to memorize it? Now, if you're interested in logs, you just want to memorize values, that's great. But if we're talking about pr practical purposes on the MCAT, you don't want to be doing that. Okay? And if it really bugs you, especially if you're in our class, I will show you how to compute this thing without memorizing it. Okay? But, I mean, that would be such a pain. Why would you do that? Okay? But, All right, so let's send this away. And one last thing to do with logs, just in case, and that is the famous thing for like, the decibel setup. And if you're in our class, of course, you know that we're going to cover this later. 
But right now, we'll just take it as a granted that this equation somehow works for computing intensity of sound uh, on the decibel scale. And let's say you have something like Just make sure you're okay with these math skills and you're good to go. The only other thing I might advise is make sure you can do simple algebra, but we've seen that already when we went through the chem stuff, right, and we saw basic equations. If you can do that, you are totally fine for the MCAT.